It's Travel Michigan. I'm Dave Lorenz along with Michelle Grinnell. And Michelle, we get to head up to beautiful Traverse City next. Absolutely. And it's cherry time in Traverse City. Uh, We are headed into the National Cherry Festival, which is happening July 5th through 12th. And we have Michael Norton, who is the Media Relations Manager for Traverse City Tourism, here to tell us all things National Cherry Festival, all things cherry, and all things Traverse City. So welcome to the show, Mike. Hey, it's good to be here. How are you? I am great. I am excited um, that it is almost Cherry Festival time again. I, I, and I think <laughs> folks are pretty familiar with it here in Michigan, but in case they're not, um, this is really a way to celebrate cherries. It is indeed. And of course, uh, uh, as everybody in Michigan knows by now, uh, Trevor City uh, considers itself the cherry capital of the U.S. We uh, Michigan produces, oh, 75% of the cherries, the tart cherries that are made in the country, and most of them come from right around here. Mm-hmm. So for the past more than 80 years, we've been celebrating that with a festival. Well, you know, there's a lot of talk about agritourism these days, about uh, kind of celebrating our agricultural and tourism heritage. And a uh, funny thing is, you've been doing that for a long time up there in Traverse City. We have indeed. And of course, the uh, big reason is not only because of all the, um, you know, the the farms and the cherry trees and all, but uh, you really do understand in Traverse City how to blend, um, you know, the the entire experience with the farmers markets and the fresh food from local farms. It's it's just a cool place. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Cherry Festival is a really good time for us to showcase that. And we do that in all kinds of ways. Um, sometimes because people can't make it out to the farm markets and because the cherry harvest doesn't always coincide with the festival, uh, we've got booths and uh, displays and uh, little markets set up in the festival where people can come and enjoy uh, cherry products. And then we actually have a shuttle where we take people out to uh, uh, Leelanau County where uh, they can actually uh, uh, walk through a uh, a working cherry farm and understand a little bit of, uh, about the cherry industry. Oh, that's pretty neat. Um, mm-hmm. If there's like one event at the Cherry Festival that's your favorite, what would you say it is? Well, it, it's not entirely a pure Cherry Festival event. I'm a big fan of traditional Fourth of July celebration. Yeah. And uh, as it happens, Cherry Festival is always really kind of close to uh, to the Fourth of July. This year, it, it, the Cherry Festival actually st- gets started on July 5th. Uh, so the day before, which is Independence Day, uh, they actually are having a wonderful sort of pre-festival uh, celebration. Uh, the Navy's Blue Angels are going to be uh, at the Cherry Festival this year, and uh, that always means uh, big attendance and excitement. And uh, what they're doing for uh, for the 4th of July is that that's the day the uh, the uh, Blue Angels will be doing their sort of dress rehearsal for the big air show on July 5th. And so, uh, you know, if you come down here on the Bayfront, and it's, it's a beautiful setting on, on our West Bay, uh, they do a great, uh, they go through their entire routine uh, with music, and uh, actually there's a what they're calling the Great American Picnic uh, over at the Haggerty Center, uh, a catered picnic, uh, where people can go and uh, see that from uh, those beautiful uh, maritime docks that are right over the bay, enjoy some good food and fellowship, uh, and really kind of feel... Uh, a special Fourth of July uh, celebration there. So, and of course, in the evening, um, the amazing uh, fireworks display that uh, we've been able to put together over the last couple of years. It's, uh, it's they've really kicked it up a couple of notches now. Uh, I don't know if you know about the Boom Boom Club, but it, that's a, a local uh, fundraising uh, group that's actually gone to. Uh, take our, our, our fireworks display kind of out of the ordinary and uh, made it really something special. So, you know, this is, of course, such a busy time. Um, what do you recommend people do? Here it is. It's, uh, what are we, we're a few weeks away from uh, the beginning of the festival. Uh, hotel rooms, uh, should they contact your office or, or just start searching around? Contacting our office is probably a good first stop because we can we know – uh, who's filling up and and where there are still places and and we can save people I think a lot of uh, uh, a lot of false starts when mm-hmm. they're trying to find a room uh, just by giving them good advice. So that's Traverse City Tourism and the website is traversecity.com. Pretty simple and 
easy to get to. And I, I, I would I would also recommend that because uh, I have tried to get rooms that week, um, and you really need to start doing that right now. So don't put it off. It's a That's it's a big true. time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really yeah. good. So now you mentioned the air show um, uh, last year. I was there, and I've never seen a nighttime air show before. Are they going to try that again this year? They are. They are. That was such a hit last oh, year that they're so going to cool. try to do that again. Yeah, that was that. I've never seen anything like that. The planes were all lighted up, and they were doing this show at night. I don't know how they did it mm-hmm. uh, with all those you know technical flights they were doing, but it was pretty phenomenal. Well, we're very fortunate in that uh, we're able to do our air shows right over Grand Traverse Bay, which makes it a little safer than on a lot of the venues that people have. Besides which, it's just beautiful. I mean, it's one of the reasons we've never had problems getting the Blue Angels to come back over and over again. They just love being up there flying over that beautiful landscape. Mike, you know, I have to say one of my... uh, things that I'm most impressed by is the parade. Uh, you know, a lot of communities have parades, have a pretty high bar, what makes a, a good parade. And you guys have a huge parade as part of Cherry Festival. Well, we have a couple of parades. And Even that better. It's true that the, the Cherry Royale Parade, the big closing day parade, is a, is a huge, huge parade. Um, and, you know, they've, they've got, you know, the thing sometimes lasts two hours. <laughs> um, but you know, my my actual favorite is the uh, um, the Junior Royale Parade, um, which is in, on one of the weekday evenings, and partly because it's a little more hometowny, and it's when the kids get out their floats and they decorate up their bikes, and uh, you know, I, somebody said it's the largest all children's parade in the country, and I'm not sure that's true, but mm. I do know that it's just a lot of fun, and it it gives you more of that feeling of. Uh, small-town America that I really like. I'm a fan of both of the parades, but if I had to choose one, I really like the little Junior Royale Parade. Yeah, of course, music plays such a big role for a Cherry uh, Festival. Uh, anybody in particular you should mention? Well, uh, yeah, you know, we've got the, the Bayside uh, stage every night. There's going to be a uh, uh, an amazing concert going on, and <laughs> I had to laugh because they uh, announced that the last night, uh, July 12th, Tommy James and the Shondells are going to be there. and going, wow, are they still around? <laughs> They're older than I am. Well, I actually kind of like those old groups when they come back, and they usually have one or two young people kind of filling in the gaps, but oh, uh, yeah. they're fun, and, and they're just oh, as yeah. good as they used to be, typically. Mm-hmm. Yep, well, that, yep. that's, that's fantastic. Jim Blossoms will be back this year, mm-hmm. too, and uh, I saw them, uh, and they're really good here, so that's a fun, fun band, too. Yeah, that's cool. So now, um, what would you recommend uh, people do if they're just kind of, you know, want to be there during the festival time and and maybe just kind of get a feeling for the downtown area? Uh, Just kind of stroll around? I I would do that. Also, take a look at the festival program. Um, It's cherryfestival.org. And see what kinds of things appeal to you, because there's a little something for everybody. But the thing about a something for everybody is, you know, some people like some things better than others. You know, you may be more interested in in kids' games and activities, or you might be more interested in uh, in some of the entertainment, or you might be more interested in some of the food events. Um, there are there's a whole raft of things to do, and uh, and you can't do it all. So it's really good to go ahead and. Take a look and see which things uh, are, are most uh, likely to appeal to you, uh, and then spend some time to surprise yourself by going to something you may may never re- really thought about. Yeah, it's good you advice, know, Mike. One of the big hits has been the uh, the dog dog uh, competition mm-hmm. that happens every year. That people love that thing. Well, it's I funny what you yeah you know, what you'll find if you just kind of check it out. It's uh, it's a good idea. Mike, thank you so much for joining us today. Mike Norton, media relations manager with Traverse City Tourism, and for more information about the festival or about visiting Traverse City any time of the year, make sure to go to TraverseCity.com. The festival coming up July 5th through the 12th with that 4th of July stuff as well. Going to be a a great time. Well, that's all the time we have for Travel Michigan today. I want to thank Mark Blackwell for engineering today's program. On behalf of Michelle Grinnell, I'm Dave Lorenz inviting you to join us next week right here on Travel Michigan, where your trip begins at Michigan.org.